welcome to the latest edition of Author Fan Face Off, where we have one great author, one great book by that author, one super fan, and we see who who knows the book better. Let's go! And today we have, drum roll please, Tay Keller and Jennifer Tan is not alone. And oh my gosh, when I read this book for the first time, the first word I wrote on my in my book is simply wow. So I was so happy to have you and I'm so happy to um, have the chance to reread it again. Um, so welcome, Tay. Thank you so much. And I've been an author fan face off for a while. So I am very excited about this. Yeah. Yay. And um, well, and I forgot to introduce myself. I am Stacey Rad. I'm just so excited to have you here today. And um, my fabulous co host is the author, Steve Shankin. Nice. Hello. Thank you. And he's going to introduce your challenger. Yes. Today. Yes. Tay, your challenger today is Sophie, as you can see from her shirt, a really serious reader. Tell us what, what that means again, in case, in case people can't read it. It's a bibliophobia. It says the fear of running out of books. The fear of running out of books, which is appropriate. In addition to reading, Sophie, you love figure skating and volleyball. Sixth grader from Illinois. And I think you're you're ready to go, right? You look ready. You look focused and quite serious, which is yeah. good. That's good. All right. Well, Stacey's going to ask the first questions. All right. And this one is for Sophie. So the book is set in Norwell, but what does Mallory call the town? Nowhereville. Awesome. That's typical. You just got it. Awesome. Um, and Tay, what school event is happening when Mal finds out that Jennifer Chan has run away? Oh, uh, the orchestra concert. Okay. Very good. Yeah, we always want it. We want to ask or talk rather about the book, kind of give a summary of it, but we also don't because we're always afraid of giving spoilers. So hopefully that will come out as we go along. <laughs> but that is a key, obviously a key point and not a spoiler that Jennifer Chan runs away from school and, and what has happened to her is a central mystery in the story. All right, Sophie, what does Jennifer, Jennifer call her journals? She keeps this series of journals. What does she call them? Yes, very confident. All right, and Tay, most people, they just casually say UFO, but Jennifer's a little more serious and she says UAP. What do those letters stand for? Uh, that is an unidentified aerial phenomena, which I learned writing this book. Um, I had no idea that there was a new term for it, uh, but I, I did a lot of research into aliens. So you have a central character, Jennifer, who's really into the search for intelligent life and aliens. Is that something that you have always been into or did you have to learn about it for this story? Um, I've always thought it was interesting, um, but I never really dove into it. I kind of was thinking about, you know, the feeling of being alienated and bullying and how that kind of worked. And also the feeling of you know, trying to look outside of yourself and see what is out there in the world, you know, outside of the little middle school bubble and then outside of, you know, earth, <laughs> um, two extremes. Um, so it, it was really fun. And that's kind of part of what I love so much about writing is tackling a subject that I know nothing about and then spending the time learning about it. Yeah, totally, totally agree. Um, okay, and then, um, and the other whole, another side of the story is just the mean girls and the friendships and middle school and all of that. So relatable, I think, to too many of us. Um, all right, Sophie, Ingrid and Kath are the two members of this school club. Science club. Yeah, okay. And staying in school... Mal and Reagan first become friends during this class, Tay. Oh, uh, PE. <laughs> and they bond uh, by getting out of PE, which uh, is, you know, something that I, I don't officially encourage, but uh, may have done a few times. <laughs> <laughs> and we won't say why, but... <laughs> All right. Now you guys know, because I know you've um, seen the show before, that as we go along, the questions get harder, which usually just means that we're asking about things that come up maybe once in the whole book. And that's kind of about to start happening for Sophie. 
Mal tells the story of the first time she ever fainted. Where was she when that happened? She was in a Ferris wheel. Wow, I thought that was really hard. All right, and this had to come up. Tell you know this had to come up. Jennifer is super interested in this secret government test site in Nevada. What is it? Oh, uh, Area 51. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> that definitely came up in my alien research. <laughs> Anytime that comes up in a book, we got to, I feel like I have to ask about that. <laughs> <laughs> so fascinating. And it comes up in, and like, and I did a serious nonfiction book about the Cold War, and it's very much a central part of it because it's not a made up thing. The government did all sorts of top secret things and, of course, lied about it, which opens us up to all these other questions about what we don't know. Yeah, I know. It's interesting to look into and, and think, you know, even if it's not aliens, there are still so many mysteries and, and oh, things to explore. Definitely. All right, All right, four to four. All right, Sophie. And this comes up, a, you know, a few times. Mal's father only makes this food on the worst days, days the family needs extra comfort. What is it? Oh, no. Starts with an S. <laughs> yes, but you know it. Right? Sauerkraut? Yeah. Yum, 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 yum. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's so impressive. That was a really hard question. <laughs> I guess you're not a fan yourself of the uh, the old sauerkraut. <laughs> um, where did that come from, Tay? Uh, that little detail is based on my own life. My dad has a family recipe uh, sauerkraut, and it's it's our New Year's tradition. And then you know, on special occasions, he'll make that sauerkraut. And I, I really, I, I wasn't a fan of it. <laughs> well, for most of my years as a kid, and kind of only recently that I've, I've come to appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Now this one, Tay, is, I think this is really hard. Jennifer has two posters of astronauts on the walls of her room. Who are they? Oh my gosh. This is hard specifically because I kept changing them. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, I went through a few. Um, and I, and uh, maybe Sophie remembers. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Mae Jemison and then Leroy Chow. Am I pronouncing that right? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, yes, yeah. Oh, the first Chinese American, I think, um, astronaut. Okay. Yeah, we always find that when we ask very detailed questions like that to authors, they're like, well, in the first draft, it was this. and the second draft, I don't remember who I actually put in. So, yeah. That was that was me, that question. That was, <laughs> that was a good question. <laughs> it was a good question. I, I, I put it on there, so I'm blaming myself. That was that was really tough. Um, That's the kind of question that that would be like a bonus question and a pop quiz. <laughs> yeah, we had a... We always come up with, we have a few options for bonus ones. I picked this one for as a bonus because I really liked it, but, and I didn't know it. So I love learning something new about, about space and, and that kind of science. And all right, so it's five to four, but whoever knows this, feel if you feel you know it, raise your hand, let me know, and I'll call on you. Now, Jennifer is a science expert and space expert, and she describes something called the altruism theory. Just quite brilliant. What is it? Who can describe that for me? Oh, Sophie, first up. Isn't it that like aliens, they've already gone through like their um, like pandemics and world wars and like stuff like that. And they're advanced enough to start to look for um, other life and try to contact us. That's part of it. That's part of it. There's another element that's really important to it. I don't know if Tay wants if you want to jump in. Uh, sure, this idea that if they have gotten that far, then uh, it's they've kind of survived this themselves in a way. You know, they haven't killed themselves off their nuclear war or anything. So that means that they must be good and they must be a peaceful species if they've reached that level of te technological advancement. Exactly. Very good. I would give you each a half point yeah. because you both did it as a team. 
But so that means, Sophie, you won. Congratulations. Yay! Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs>